Today we will be discussing one of the many features available within Protege GX, Data Sync Service. The Data Sync Service combines the power of Protege GX's enterprise level integrated access control, intrusion detection and building automation system with external data sources. In this demonstration I will be showing a basic configuration of Data Sync for a single one-time importation of an existing user database. Once you have installed the Data Sync service and launched the application, this is the first screen that you will see. We're going to talk you through what the, we're physically looking at, and that is the data target. This is essentially the selection of where you can configure the system and point to Data Sync to draw the information from. Secondly, you would then require the SOAP service address. This is where Protege GX SOAP service has been installed, whether it is on the local device, as you can see with mine, or on another machine in a different location. If it is in a different location, then obviously you will require the data server address. This is the IP address and the port of where the server is located. Thirdly, you will require a username and a password. We highly recommend that you create a new operator within Protege GX and label it data sync so you can keep track of all of the software communications. So let's start programming. First, obviously, we're going to point to our target system, which is Protege GX. It is currently located on my local host machine, so I have got the local host server in there. Basically, you don't require a data server address because we are on the local host. Um, I do have a new user in my system, which is labeled as data sync. I'm going to copy that into my password at the same time and once it is registered that you should see I'm allowed now to choose a specific site. Um, once I've chosen the site the sync options now become available so I can resynchronize every minute, delete the import file once completed, import the expired records and once I've done that I can then delete the expired records if need be otherwise I can leave them within GX just so you have a record. Uh, down below our first scenario basically allows us to import the first 10 users of a user import. As you can see the data server address here has come up to say that I haven't licensed my uh, data sync service. This will allow you to install it and temporarily play with the system until you get the uh, until you are satisfied essentially that it is running correctly and will allow you to still import the first 10 users in any database you try to install. So we're going to try and install the first 10 users uh, directly from a file directory which I have stored locally on my machine. So I will navigate now to my local disk. Once I've chosen this I can then choose which specific file within there I would like to install. Now this is my level 1 usernames just as a demonstration piece of information. Now being that it is a CSV file they are delimited via a comma so it's automatically selected that for you. I can start my import at row 2. It's going to tell me what I physically need in each original space with along with the result value. At the base of the screen on the data sync service configuration tool is basically our field mapping tool. The target field is essentially where inside GX you would like the original file to end up. So as you can see my original file of my CSV tells me that the first column is my unique column, second being my first name and so on. The resulting value currently is exactly what we want to see inside GX but we have to create a target field of exactly where that is going to be located. So if we select this basically our target field on column 1 is my unique field. So what I can do is create a custom field 1 to create any unique fields of any user import databases. Once you've selected that, um, then things start to line up. So we then have our first name. You can select the target field here and type in first. Uh, very, very simple search engine automatically creates and files the information for you. Then we have our last name and so forth down the list. So as you can see, the custom field one, I have a unique identifier here. I can also, if I did not have a unique identifier, I can actually create multiple unique identifiers which is then looking at either the first name and the last name inside the entire database. But because I do have a unique field, I can now create that as my custom field. The display name, that essentially is just going to be called our naming field inside Protege. Now inside the instruction manual will basically it can be a complete mapping field of where 
SOAP is integrated directly into Protege GX, so you may want to spend some time looking through this prior to creating your data sync service. Right, now once we get into our facility codes, or our facility numbers, these are what we call a group identifiers, so they can be utilised across the entire import. As you can see, once we get down to our facility number to import this, uh, as you're aware within Protege GX, you can have multiple facility codes, card numbers for each individual user. So within this import tool, we actually allow you to import them as what we call a family. This is how it is linked within our SOAP service. So this being our family number for that SOAP service, we can actually import the entire card number group for everybody. Now inside here, we need to then select that our card number, which is still located down here, is our number six, and our family number it has skipped out. So what we need to do is drop our family number in there, which is our facility code. We can now add our card number, and site is not required because up the top here, we've actually navigated directly through to this specific site. So the last thing we need to add in here is our PIN numbers and our access levels. So the card number is still actually located here, don't worry about that because also we need to identify in our advanced situation here that we're deliberately going to choose this specific facility code and this specific card number for each individual user. We do that by clicking the advanced menu group. So inside here, under the group data options, we need to select that this is identified as a singular piece of data. Okay, once we've done that, it will then navigate through and say that it is definitely a singular piece of data. Likewise with the group data on the card itself. Now, once we get down through here, we need our final couple of devices, which is our pin number and our access level. So the pin number, just search for pin number and away we go. Pin number is now located. And access level, likewise with the group functionality here, we can have multiple access levels for each individual user. So in doing so, this is also classed as another grouped device. As you can see here, we have our user access level. Once we import this, it will ask us to import the entire group. And being that our access level is number eight, we can then drop our user access level in as number eight. And again, inside here, because we can have multiple access levels, we also need to utilize this as a singular piece of data, but to also find that physical access level within Protege GX. To import access levels, you also must have them completely set or named within GX before the import will actually happen. Once you've completed all of that, we can click OK. We can now click the Save button to can, uh, save this particular import and configuration. Being that Protege and ICT's data sync service, you can import as many times as you wish or from multiple CSV files at the same time into multiple databases. Once you think you've completed it correctly, we can now click the Start tool. And once it is running, we can now open Protege GX and have a look for our users themselves. And there we go, all been imported directly.